Uh, we have uh, uh, in Hebron, maybe in one square kilometer, uh, we have nearly 22 uh, blocked roads or restriction of movement and so on. But in total, in Hebron district, we have nearly 150 in a situation that rises up to an ethnic cleansing policy uh, within the city. Uh, all the statistics, 520 Palestinian shops are closed by direct Israeli military orders, uh, other uh, seven to 800 shops it closed as a consequence uh, of the Israeli policies in Hebron. The terror that the Palestinians are facing here, well, I call it a formal terror, a state terror by the state of Israel, imposing the restrictions of movement, issuing the military orders, closing the houses, the streets, uh, the searching system, uh, the registration policy, and so on and then a state-sponsored terror, which is the terror of the Israeli settlers attacking the Palestinians who live in the area that have been closed by the army uh, all the time, destroying their properties, physically attacking them, trying to raid their homes, uh, and, and, and aiming to force them out. Uh, the settlers are very clear, actually. They say that this place is for us. Uh, Hebron is uh, for them, and uh, they want to kick us out. In some places in Hebron you see graffitis that says free Israel. Uh, for us, uh, you know, simply we don't have alternatives. This is our country and we are attached to it and we have to struggle for it and we have to protect it and to protect our presence. We are defending our uh, cultural and social rights and we are defending our existence. The methodology of building settlements at the first years of the occupation, confiscating land for security reasons and then transferring it to the settlers. Of course, of course, this mechanism has been changed uh, sometime mid 70s. Now, all the time, uh, the settlers wanted to come and live in the center of Hebron. Uh, of course, uh, for them. Uh, they say that it's, uh, you know, the city of Abraham, Ir Ha'avot, Ir Abraham. Uh, they talked about the ancient Jewish history in Hebron, which is uh, true. And Hebron actually what was a model of uh, coexistence between a Jewish community and a Muslim community in the past centuries. Uh, Jerusalem was another example of coexistence between Christian community, Muslim community and Jewish community as Bethlehem was another example of coexistence between a Christian community and Muslim community. And of course, this reality has changed in the, after the engagement of the Zionist movement when we started receiving Zionist immigrants to Palestine. And so in Hebron, uh, we used to have like this Jewish community that is not really one community. You know, the Palestinian Jewish community, of which the Hebronites actually used to call their neighbors Yahud, Jewish. And then they used to call these newcomers Zionist, Sahyuniyin uh, in Arabic. So they used the phrase Yahud for the people, the Palestinian Jews who were part of the culture, part of the language, uh, part of the heritage, and so on. And these newcomers, uh, who are uh, Zionists, and uh, in the heat of uh, you know the rising the rising nationalistic movement uh, feelings, in 1929 there were riots in Hebron in which uh, 67 Jews were killed. Uh, if you go in depth of it, you will find out that 58 uh, amongst those who were killed were you, you know Zionist but not Jewish, uh, you know not the locals. Of course, after that, there was another big question mark about the role of the British police that time. Everyone here was under the British uh, mandate. Anyway, so many of these settlers, uh, they say that they came back to take back old Jewish properties. Uh, it's good to know, I'm sure some of you already know, that when they started this project in Hebron, when they moved to the city center, I was a kid, 
But I remember that real dis descendants of the real owners of some buildings in Hebron, they visited the local council, it's right here, and they declared in a clear voice that we disagree that these settlers take our properties and we consider that as theft. Uh, since the beginning of the occupation, the Israeli authorities opened uh, the mosque, the Ma'arat HaMakfila, for Jewish worshippers. And, uh, uh, you know, it, at the beginning years of the occupation, like, we have Muslims and Jews worshipping inside the, the mosque, uh, but it's uh, with not good feelings between each other. Like, one side will speak, uh, pray in a loud voice, the other side will consider it as a harassment. So there were lots of frictions, quarreling, yelling at each other, and so on, uh, of which in many cases the Israeli army will interfere, and of course to the side of the settlers. Since the first day of the occupation, all the entrances of the mosque has been manned by the Israeli authorities 24-7. Uh, the big turning point was 1994, the mosque massacre, when an extreme Israeli settler uh, Baruch Goldstein, a physician reservist in the Israeli army. He came into the mosque in an, with an automatic gun and with his uniform, passed the soldiers. Uh, it was the middle of Ramadan when he sprayed with bullets Muslim worshippers kneeling to pray, killed the 29 of them, wounded more than 100. You know, after the mosque massacre, we thought that uh, with the international public opinion pressure and that the Israeli government will feel at least little embarrassed by what after what happened and maybe they will take some action uh, restricting the settlers if not evacuating them completely but what has happened is that we were punished by the Israeli authorities by closing uh, down uh, Shohada Street for the Palestinian traffic that time closing down our wholesale fruits and vegetable market and kicking the people away. The Israeli army, they put the checkpoints at the entrances, uh, depriving Palestinian vehicles of uh, going in. Now, during the Oslo process, it was supposed to be a peace process, but uh, unfortunately for me, it is more a negotiating process. In the view of most of the Palestinians, as me, it was an unjust agreement. Uh, that talks about, uh, you know, dividing the city into two security zones, H1 and H2. Part of the agreement, a concrete article says that, talks about the steps that should be taken right after signing the agreement to normalize life in Hebron, because as I said, the agreement came after the Mosque massacre. And uh, part of that was that, uh, you know, the Shuhada Street should be opened to the Palestinian traffic. Now, you see the situation there. We cannot even walk. The wholesale fruits and vegetable market has never been opened uh, after. Actually, they had an open ceremony, uh, fake thing, inviting the whole media, getting the shop owners and the Chamber of Commerce of Hebron and the, and the mayor. And they went to the market and opened uh, the, so the stores for one day. And we had a show and then everything was closed after. Later on, uh, actually, the settlers turned uh, some of the shops into housing apartments. Now, by the years, the Israeli authorities has used any kind of resistance to the occupation to impose more sanctions on the Palestinians. So if we resist, we get more sanctions. If the settlers kill us, we get more sanctions. Uh, ironically, that uh, sometimes one of the residents go in the morning to the school or to work, Maybe they come back and they need something from the house at 10 o'clock, they will be allowed in. But in the late afternoon, if they come back home, sometimes they, they are told that they are not listed. How come that the person came in at 10 o'clock and he was registered and by 4 o'clock he's not? They have also developed more checkpoints. Uh, they developed the system of going in. We started at 2010 with the name of the campaign Open Shohada Street. And in the past two years, uh, we have uh, changed the name into dismantle the gate to uh, take the settlers out of Hebron. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the situation in Hebron is turning worse. Uh, even uh, the peace camp and the progressive uh, uh, camp in Israel is uh, losing uh, much power. Uh, there is a big shift to the right in Israel. 
and also within the West Bank. For us as Palestinians, this is very important, as this is the struggle for justice, as this is the struggle for human rights, and this is the struggle for humanity. Uh, we are very proud of having all internationals and Israeli friends who are engaged in this struggle.